Don't Eat the Blue Bonnets, written by Ellen Leventhal and Ellen Rothberg, illustrated by Bill Meganhart, read by Mrs. Drotty. For a cow, Sue Ellen had a mind of her own. When the other cows mooed, Sue Ellen whistled. When Max the Longhorn gave an order, all the cows snapped to attention, except Sue Ellen. She just switched her tail, batted her eyelashes, and smelled the daisies. Every single spring, Max put up a sign in Sue Ellen and Lisa Jean's favorite pasture. Hmm, Sue Ellen said. Max is not the boss of me. He can't tell me what to do. With that, she hooked tails with Lisa Jean and they sashayed across the field. I can eat the blue bonnets if I want to, she snorted. The blue bonnets won't come back next year, next spring if you eat them, Lisa Jean warned. But we eat the grass and it comes back, Sue Ellen argued. That's true, replied Lisa Jean, but blue bonnets are different. They won't come back. Having a mind of her own, Sue Ellen wasn't totally convinced. The next day when Sue Ellen and Lisa Jean arrived at the South Pasture, the blue bonnets were just starting to pop up. Sue Ellen's mouth watered. Don't forget, we're not supposed to eat the blue bonnets, Lisa Jean reminded her. I'm not eating them. I'm just looking at them, Sue Ellen said, licking her lips. As they stood beside the pond, Sue Ellen stuck her nose in the air and took a deep breath. <gasps> Don't the blue bonnets smell yummy? Don't eat the blue bonnets, Lisa Jean reminded her. Sue Ellen licked her lips again. I'm not eating them. I'm just smelling them. She swished her tail. Water comes back to the pond every year, doesn't it? She muttered. Later, as Sue Ellen and Lisa Jean were gazing in the shade of the big oak tree, Sue Ellen noticed one small, perfect blue bonnet. It looked delicious. Her mouth watered. Don't eat the blue bonnets, Lisa Jean reminded her. Sue Ellen stuck her tongue out and licked the perfect flower. I'm not eating it. I'm just licking it. She looked up at the tree as the trees and swished her tail. The leaves on the tree could come back every year, don't they? She said. So do the birds, said Sue Ellen, as they watched the mockingbirds teach their babies to fly. I guess they do, Lisa Jean said as she watched each baby leave the nest and return safely. By the end of the week, the blue bonnets covered the pasture and Sue Ellen couldn't stop thinking about them. She imagined how the petals would taste sliding down her throat. Sue Ellen thought about the water in the pond. She remembered the leaves coming back every spring and she watched the birds fly by. And with that, she charged into the south pasture and ate every single blue bonnet. Sue Ellen was so full, she had to lie under the big oak tree and take a nap. When Sue Ellen opened her eyes, Max was standing over her. Hmm, complained Max. Somebody ate all the blue bonnets. So what? They'll just grow back next year. Sometimes nature needs some help, Max mumbled. We'll just wait and see, yawned Sue Ellen. So they waited. The spring faded. In the fall, the leaves fell. Oops, I got them out of order. I'm sorry, let me reread. The spring faded. The summer came and went. In the fall, the leaves fell. The winter chill blew, chill blew in from the north. 
Sue Ellen and Lisa Jean thought spring would never come. Then the days began to grow longer and the snow started to melt. When the spring grass grew so tall that it tickled their bellies, they knew it was time to head to the south pasture where the bluebonnets grew. When they reached the pasture that morning, they saw Max carrying his sign. Well, Sue Ellen, I guess we won't be needing this sign since the bluebonnets haven't grown back, Max bellowed. All the cows glared at Sue Ellen. Having a mind of her own, Sue Ellen decided to take charge. If the bluebonnets won't come back, she thought, I'll bring them back myself. With that, she swished her tail and headed to the north pasture to gather some of the bluebonnets growing there. Bluebonnets are bluebonnets, she said. I'll just move the bluebonnets from the north pasture to the south pasture. By midday, the bluebonnets had wilted and were so flat that even the bees couldn't find the pollen in them. Having a mind of her own, Sue Ellen decided to take charge. Blue bonnets are blue bonnets. I'll just paint them on the hay, she thought as she grabbed her paints. As Sue Ellen finished painting the last bale of hay, she glanced up and exclaimed in shock, Well, that isn't going to work for long. Having a mind of her own, Sue Ellen didn't give up. She took her paints, scissors, construction paper, and glue and headed to the north pasture. By the end of the day, the field was alive with paper blue bonnets that Sue Ellen had made herself. That night, a Texas-sized thunderstorm woke Sue Ellen up. Lightning lit up the sky, the thunder boomed, and the rain soaked the ground. When Sue Ellen and Lisa Jean got to the pasture the next morning, the paper blue bonnets had blown away. I guess only real blue bonnets are the blue of the sky, and only real blue bonnets have that wonderful smell, and only real blue bonnets are worth licking, she sighed. So, having a mind of her own, Sue Ellen decided to take charge. That night, she went to the south pasture and planted a packet of Max's seeds she had found in the barn. When the next spring came, Sue Ellen took out her paints and freshened up Max's sign. Max, she said, batting her lashes, will you please put the sign up again? He laughed. Ha, huh, there knows there's no need. The blue bonnets won't be back. Having a mind of her own, Sue Ellen decided to take charge. She took the sign and planted it firmly in the ground where Max had put it before. It won't be long, it wasn't long before their favorite pasture was beautiful again. Having a mind of her own, Sue Ellen decided she could look at the blue bonnets, smell the blue bonnets, lick the blue bonnets, but she could not eat the blue bonnets. The end.